Well, hello everyone. Uh, welcome back to another one of our video series here. Uh, my name is Corey Perlman, the owner of a social media agency, and we work with a lot of uh, dental periodontists uh, over the last few years. And we've done these series of videos just to help people who are in education mode, um, looking to understand more about their overall health or any pain uh, or issues that they're having uh, with their teeth or with their gums. Today, I'm excited to have two uh, fantastic doctors with me. Uh, one up in uh, Michigan and one down in Florida. Literally, Florida is my home state, and I lived in Michigan for 12 years, so near and dear to my heart. Uh, Dr. Mark McCauley is with us here, and Dr. Amar Katranji is here with us as well. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to uh, say hello to everybody and just introduce yourself. So, uh, Dr. McCauley, I'm going to start with you. Welcome. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mark McCauley. Uh, Periodontist in Fort Lauderdale. I've uh, been practicing, uh, practice with my father. He started the practice, you know, 45, almost 50 years ago now. And, uh, you know, kind of taken over and filled, filled in uh, his, his, in his footsteps here. And he, he kind of started the whole microbiological periodontal treatments uh, back, you know, years and years and years ago, actually with with Dr. Uh, Dr. Katranji's Dr. Uh, partner um, in one of his practices there. And, you know, they've, they've kind of pioneered microbiological periodontal treatments through the years. And, you know, it's, it's been very successful. And we, I've just been able to take that and just run with it here. And Dr. Katranji, how about yourself? Yeah, so I'm a periodontist as well here in uh, Southeastern Michigan, Southfield, Michigan, right outside Detroit. Um, as Mark alluded to, I have a partner, Dr. Joe Nemeth, who's been um, probably at the forefront of all sorts of aspects of, of periodontal treatment, dental treatment um, for, for the last 30, 40 years. Um, get to work with him and, and study microbiological treatments for periodontal disease and as well as uh, regenerative procedures. I do personally, that's kind of my focus. Um, with dental implants and um, just restoring overall health and um, helping people with their smiles and their their confidence. So I've been doing that for about 14 years, graduated from the University of Michigan and stayed up here in uh, the cold Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on your uh, final four appearance in football. I thought that was... Uh... Thank you. Go blue. Go blue. Oh, well, nice. accomplished. Well, well accomplished. We're in a sea of red here in Atlanta, Georgia with the, the Bulldogs, but um, oh, yeah. tough team. <laughs> they yeah. are a tough team. <laughs> well, both of you, you know, you have something in common. You both obviously you've got, you know, great doctors that sort of have come before you there in, in, in the clinic there and to learn from and grow from. And you're kind of the, the, um, the up and coming and, you know, the future, if you will, you know, so that's big shoes to live up to for both of you guys, but you're, you're oh, doing yeah. a good job. Um, I wanted to do this particular one now because right around the time that we're in, and this will launch probably in late January, early February, uh, we are unfortunately still in COVID, uh, almost on year two fully in, in the midst of the ups and downs that have been COVID. And one of the things that I know personally has happened with me, and I know with a lot of my friends and people around is we've been concerned to do our normal visits uh, for our health. And so I wanted to start with asking you guys specifically around your expertise, uh, why people shouldn't wait uh, around getting, you know, any dental procedures done or just checking out any overall health uh, with their mouth. And so, Dr. McCauley, I'll start with you. Uh, wh why do you think it's so important that people make that appointment regardless of what's happening in the world right now? I know. Yeah. I mean, at this point, we're all hoping to be done and over and through with COVID, um, you know, but we're, we're, we're still in the thick of it, unfortunately. But in all honesty, it's coming to a dental office is not something you have to be afraid of. Um, I, I'm not aware of any, you know, dentist to patients transmission of, of COVID. I'm not aware of really any, any studies that have shown that um, because we've been at the forefront here for, for two years now with COVID floating around. And, you know, they've shown that dentists actually have a lower rate of, of contracting COVID than, than the general population. So, you know, it's, we've taken all the precautions, you know, we've got filters in all the room, we use UV lights to disinfect everything. I mean, we've all got our N95s on, it's, you know, we take all the precautions necessary to make sure that, you know, our patients are safe. It's, because that's our primary concern is that our, our patients are going to be safe. And, 
you know, as long as we take those precautions, they're going to be, they're going to be great. They're, they can have treatment in a, in a safe, effective environment. And it's, it's going to be good for them because you, you don't want to put this sort of thing off. Um, you definitely don't want to put it off because having gum disease, believe it or not, is actually, it's, it's a contributor to the severity of COVID. Um, if you have active gum disease, you're actually, there's a study that came out a few months ago, you're nine times higher. You've got a nine times higher likelihood of ending up in the ICU with COVID because believe it or not, I mean, gum disease, periodontal disease is a bacterial infection. That bacteria gets into your lungs. If you have COVID and you've got bacteria in your lungs, pathogenic bacteria in your lungs, it's a very bad combination and it just kind of, it can get out of hand. So you know, come in, don't, don't worry about it. The, the, you're, you're, you're at a less risk here than going to the supermarket as far as contracting COVID. So, you know, it, it's not something they really have to worry, worry that much about. It's, um, you know, it, you know, we, we take all the precautions necessary. Dr. Katranji, um, specific question for you, uh, when people wait, why, why is it worse? Like, uh, what, what, what can make it harder on you guys if people wait a year, two years, three years to come see? That, that's a great question. I think what Mark was saying is, is right on. Uh, periodontal disease is an infection. It's an infection of the gums. So if you can imagine we tell patients after we've done cleaning them up, after we've done our procedures, we want to maintain them and we maintain them at every three months. Every three months, we have an interval where they come in and we get rid of that bacteria for them. And the reason why we do that is because bacteria is dynamic. It's not a stagnant thing and it gets worse over time. And we know there's a mark right at three months, the bacteria becomes very aggressive. If we're allowing that bacteria, that aggressive bacteria to stay in the gums for six months, eight months, a year, two years, some of these patients, it's two years before they come back. That is just causing destruction and it's connected. Our bodies are all connected. What's happening in the mouth ends up happening in the rest of the body. So we want to prevent that for them. We want to make sure that we're part of the solution. And the solution many times is some treatments we, that we do require almost no downtime. They come in a couple hours, they're cleaned up. They don't even feel it. We sedate patients, they go to sleep. So imagine you come, you're asleep, you wake up, it's all done. You don't have to worry anymore about, you know, how it's going to feel because it's not going to be bad anymore. So we have ways to make these things better. But the sooner we see you, the easier it is for us to treat you. And in many cases, the treatment is 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 easy to save teeth. And, and that's what we're trying to do as periodontists. We're trying to save the teeth, trying to keep them healthy. And um, for, for, I'll start, I'll go back to you, Dr. Katranji, on this question. Um, I know a lot of dentists refer patients probably to you guys that they, they outsource, you know, stuff that they can't do. But if we're home and, and is there any kind of signs or symptoms that we're looking for uh, as, as patients that would alert us to need to come see you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. The body's always giving us signs. And the easiest sign is bleeding. You're, you should never see blood when you're brushing and flossing and cleaning your mouth. Your body is telling you something when you see blood. Mm. So the simplest thing, the simplest way your body is telling you that it needs help is with that, that bleeding. If you're flossing and you constantly see this bleeding going on, there's something going on. There's something happening in your body that needs attention. Mm. So just a simple marker like that can tell you that you require just somebody's somebody to help you out. And, and usually that's going to be a periodontist. Mm. Dr. McCauley, any other uh, signs or symptoms? Uh, that one concerns me because I do yeah. see bleeding in my gut. My <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it, it's like <laughs> anything else in your body. You know, if you're if your hand bled every time you used it, you you'd probably figure there was something up. It's the same thing. Your your mouth is telling you that that's not good. You you do not want that happening. Uh, there's some process in your mouth that's that's starting to break down the gums and also breaking down the bone underneath those. And that's you know that's one of the main symptoms. Also, I mean, loose teeth is a huge one too. 
because as that, that disease progresses, there's less support structure for those teeth. So they can actually start to get loose. And you've heard people refer to, you know, being long in the tooth. Eventually the gums start to actually shrink down and you get the teeth looking longer and longer as well. You know, when you also, if you, if you bite down and you can feel, you know, pain or just like, you know, you can feel your teeth, it just feels off. Then, you know, that that's your body telling you that there's just something not quite right going on in your mouth. And, you know, it's, it's best to get it checked out to, to make sure that, you know, you don't have something serious going on because, you know, we've got a lot of patients that have pushed this off for, for two years now, basically, just because, you know, COVID's been around. It's, it's definitely a thing. And a lot of people are fearful about it. Um, but it's not something you, you really should push off because it only gets worse with time. It only, it just progresses and gets worse and worse. And eventually, I mean, periodontal disease is one of the main reasons that people lose their teeth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not something that, uh, that you want to push off because, you know, nobody, nobody wants to lose their teeth because then they'll end up having to get implants and that's, you know, that's, that's great and all, but it's, Again, we're, we're periodontists. We're supposed to save teeth as our primary mission, our primary goal. You know, we've kind of built our practice around that, uh, that goal to try to try to, you know, save smiles here. Um, and it's something we're, we're, we're fantastic at. It's something we've, we've been able to, to really been very, be very successful at. Um, we, we, we can save a lot of teeth that, you know, a lot of people would just end up, you know, taking them out, you know, giving you either bridges or dentures, things like that. But we're, we're able to save a lot of these teeth and, you know, we do it. We do it daily. It's amazing. Um, well, another kind of I feel like uh, <laughs> nuance to COVID that, that's been with us now. It's almost it's amazing how comfortable we are with it are the masks. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start back with you, uh, Dr. McCauley. Um, are you seeing anything different now? We are almost on two years with people wearing masks that you weren't seeing before. I mean, you do get a little bit of a phenomenon of, uh, of mask mouth. Um, you know, you get people that, you know, now, now that they're wearing a mask, sometimes they can actually smell their breath a little bit there too. So you get people that come in, you know, they're mentioning that they have bad breath and things like that. And, you know, that, that kind of stems from just the bacteria in your mouth. If you have pathogenic bacteria in your mouth, it can trigger that, that bad breath smell and even, you know, a bad taste as well. And now that people are wearing masks, they're able to be more, more vigilant about that sort of thing. Uh, they can actually smell their breath now that they're kind of rebreathing it uh, constantly there. Um, so it's, it's something that, yeah, we, we have seen a lot more people coming in and mentioning that to us. Um, and, you know, rebreathing all that air, you don't get quite as much fresh air in your mouth. Sometimes your, your mouth can even dry out a little bit. So you, you can get some more, uh, some more, you know, gum disease as a, as a result of that, wearing the mask all the time. Dr. Kachanji, are you seeing similar or anything different? Well, I mean, to take that from a different perspective, one of the things that the masks are doing is they're providing a mask for people who are going through procedures um, who may have been concerned about the aesthetics to, to get by. Um, and, you know, there are some times where we want to push things off because, you know, you're, you, you know, you have a wedding coming up or you have, you know, something happening in your life. Well, many times if somebody's going to lose a tooth and they're going to go through a process of replacement, um, there's a little bit of that anxiety of, well, you know, people are going to see this gap in my mouth. And I will tell you the mask has given us that, second option for patients as far as, um, you know, covering up their smile when they have a tooth that's missing while we're in the midst of replacing it. So there has been some of that as well with uh, COVID. So, you know, sometimes I tell people, you know, now's a good time to go through with therapy because we can wear the mask and cover things up. So just a different perspective. No, that, yeah, that's I, I like that. You're thinking out of the box there. That, that, that's good. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I have found that as well because, you know, whereas previously, you know, if you, if you're doing some implants or you're, you know, you're taking teeth out in the, in the front area and you can't immediately replace those, you know, you've got people that aren't as reluctant to get that sort of thing done where, you know, it's going to be a couple months before they're able to get some teeth in there. 
they're just like, it's fine. I wear the mask all the time anyway. Whenever you go out in public, I'm wearing a mask. So it's it's not a big deal for uh, for a lot of people to to go without, you know, a tooth or two for the for a, a few months, especially when placing implants. You place the implant, and in a lot of cases, you're not able to immediately immediately restore that. So you know, you've you've got a mask that's uh, that, that's that you're able to kind of kind of hide that for a couple months while while everything heals, which is. You know, that's great. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's kind of thinking out of the box there. I didn't, I didn't think of that initially. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're literally masking the, the issue, but mm-hmm. eventually <laughs> the masks are going to come off. Yeah. And, right. uh, one of our other doctors sent us a really funny meme picture advertisement. I forget what it was, and I'm sure you guys have seen it, but it was a picture of a guy and he had no tooth. And in the, the, the thing, it said, um, you know, you, you know, you'd be surprised how much, you know, people see the, the teeth. You didn't even realize that this guy had no eyebrow. And if you look closely, he has one eyebrow missing, but everybody recognized the tooth that yeah. he was missing. So uh, it's clearly something that it's that's, something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's something that everybody looks at, you know, it's, yeah. it's a first impression sort of thing. If you're missing a front tooth, you know, unless you're wearing a mask, <laughs> you know, it's noticeable. <laughs> exactly. Well, guys, um, this has been, you know, I think really helpful, really timely. I want to give each of you an opportunity to kind of close out by talking a little bit about your practice. I mean, um, you, you, you represent two different parts of the country, very well respected in your, your areas. Um, so just just you know, take a moment to talk about that. And then any, you know, lasting helpful hints uh, around this time, any, anything under the sun that you guys feel like, whether it be in the mouth or anything else that just, you know, as I mentioned, we are almost at the second anniversary of COVID, it's, it's really been trying for a lot of people. And, and so I think this has been helpful and anything else in addition to, and Dr. Katranji, I'm going to start with you. Talk a little bit about your practice and then any other valuable tips you want to give. Yeah. So, um, you know, as specialists in our field, um, I know Mark, we talked about this, we, we saw each other recently. Um, a big part of what we do is kind of like these more complicated procedures, these procedures that require um, a little bit more knowledge of surgery, of how things heal. And in many cases, we're cleaning or fixing things that are happening in other offices. And I, you know, not to say anything, but this is the time where, you know, somebody loses a tooth and they don't know where to go sometimes for treatment. And there's a little bit of confusion about this. And not to say that other people can't do this, but there are some people who are specialists in replacing teeth, replacing bone, replacing gums, and saving teeth. And that's that's typically what a periodontist is. Um, in our practice, a big portion of our practice is more full arch cases, meaning somebody comes in and they have a denture, let's say, and their confidence is shot because when you're in a denture for a long period of time, your denture starts to move around. You can't eat. You can't enjoy your life the way that you're used to. Um, And there are places that say, hey, we can do this all in one day. So teeth in a day, or we can place implants in one day. And for some patients, they're a candidate. And there are some patients that are not candidates. And the concern that we're seeing is a lot of patients are kind of pigeonholed into one treatment because that's all this office might do. And what happens over time is those things break down and they break down in a very fantastic way. I mean, they become very difficult to restore or complete. So a case that was easy becomes much more difficult. And I bring this up because a bigger and bigger part of our office treatments, what we're seeing in new patient exams are no longer the easy cases, the cases that are, you know, you know, a simple implant that we place. And then, you know, three months later, the crown goes on. We're seeing these cases that they've had implants and maybe they weren't done in a way that uh, was successful. And so what we're trying to do is, is make sure that the, the, that the patients are informed that they need to ask questions. They need to know what's going on in their mouth and they need to be comfortable and confident with whomever they're, at, whomever they're with. So getting second opinions is a great idea. And my feeling is, is if somebody has a needs to have a second opinion from what I'm doing, I'm okay with that. And I think it's important when you have a bigger case 
that you do have multiple opinions before you move forward. And I say this as a warning because we're seeing the, we're seeing a lot of this. Um, and I'm talking about, you know, there are a lot of things out there that can be fixed. And there are some things that require a lot more work to fix. For instance, you know, Mark and I uh, were just at a conference where instead of going to the to the mouth for bone, we're going to what we call the zygoma for bone. The zygoma is this bone underneath the eye. And why are we going there? Because there's no more bone in the mouth. And some of these cases require a surgical specialist, somebody who knows what he's doing to go there. And so I guess what, what I want out there is, is for people to know that there are options, um, not you know, if you have a hammer, not everything is a nail, you know, so there's that, that old thing is like, when you have a hammer, that's all you want to do is you want to just see everything as a nail. Um, I think when you go see a specialist, when you see somebody who does these cases on a daily basis, um, there might be more treatment options and you, you, you escape those pitfalls that might occur when you're in another type of situation. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely second that. I mean, a lot of the you know, a lot of the, the dental mills and dental chains around here, they kind of have one treatment that they can do, you know, take out all your teeth, place implants, and then, you know, give you, give you a prosthesis there. And, you know, for some people that's appropriate, but we've seen some people come in that, you know, they've got a treatment plan in their hand and they say, oh, I need all my teeth out. I need implants. I look at them. I say, no, we can, we can save these teeth. I mean, you know, so it's, it's something you got to be aware of. Um, you know, when, when you go to some of these dental mills, these dental chains like that, um, just, just, you know, just, you know, be aware that there, there may be other options out there that, uh, that can either, you know, save the teeth or something a little bit more conservative, um, than, than just, you know, taking all the teeth out and placing a bunch of implants and then, then, you know, a lot of times they don't even give you maintenance. They don't even like clean your, clean your implants after they're placed, which is a terrible idea. Cause you know, you want to go for a dental cleaning uh, to get your teeth cleaned. You definitely want your implants cleaned as well, because believe it or not, you can get periodontal disease around implants. And a mm -hmm. lot of what I treat on a day-to-day -day basis is implants that, you know, haven't had appropriate maintenance or just you know, aren't as cleansable or aren't placed well that are going downhill. And, you know, I'm able to rehabilitate those, those implants a lot of the time. Um, you know, some of the time they're too far gone, but you know, a lot of the time we are able to save some of these implants that, uh, that, you know, just haven't been kept clean enough or, you know, weren't placed, placed as, as ideally as they may have maybe should have been initially. Um, so that, you know, that, that, that's something that we've been able to, uh, to do very well in our practice. And yes, Mark, I, I love what you just, what you were saying. I mean, the fact that we can save teeth is sometimes forgotten. And I know that you experience this. How many people come in and say, I just want implants, you know, like just take them all out. I just want implants. <laughs> they think it's like, it's, it's better than their natural teeth. Yeah. And we know that there's nothing better than a natural tooth. A natural tooth is the gold standard. Yep. The gold standard is a natural tooth. When we can't save the tooth, that's when we go to the implant. And we do lots of implants. We love doing yeah. implants, but only for people who need implants. Mm. And I love that. I love that you said that. That's that's wonderful. Yeah. No, I mean it's it's great because I mean that's that's literally what we do. We save teeth, and you know that's that's a periodontist first and foremost job. I mean, we, we place lots and lots of implants. Don't get me wrong, but you know, that's, that's kind of a, a secondary option. You know, the first option is to save the teeth because you get, you, they're more comfortable. You can actually feel your teeth when you bite down. Whereas with implants, you don't have that same proprioception, that same sensation when you're biting. So it's, it's not as ideal of a, of a situation. And a lot of times the implants are harder to clean than your teeth. So if you lose your teeth from gum disease and then you get implants, you need to make sure that you go to someone who knows what to do to keep those implants clean and healthy for the long term. Because, you know, what we're seeing now is a lot of these implants that were placed, you know, five years ago, you know, maybe 10 years ago. And all of a sudden they're getting bone loss more and more and more. And if you get something extreme done, like, you know, get all your teeth taken out and get implants placed. And then all of a sudden you lose bone on those implants, you don't have any bone left. 
So it's, it's something where, you know, some of these patients that they thought they were getting a treatment plan that would last them a lifetime. And it turns out they're an indenture in, in 10 years because they didn't get the proper maintenance and they didn't get the proper home care instructions. Um, and, you know, if, if it was caught, they didn't get the proper treatment to be able to, to maintain and save those implants. What, what's interesting, what's happening is I remember maybe 10 years ago or more, I used to convince patients, you know, implants are good. Like, you know, they're good for you to like replace teeth. Now I'm trying to re- tell people because they're coming in with all this marketing, with all this and it's misinformation. They start to think, oh, I, implants are better than teeth. I mean, I had a patient who only needed ortho. She needed braces. She had crooked teeth. Imagine she had crooked teeth. All she needed were was, was Invisalign or something along those lines. And somebody convinced her to take out all her teeth. And she was 40 something years old. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, well, I'm looking at your photos before and after the, the x-rays before and after you didn't need implants. You just needed ortho or veneers or something that was much more predictable. So we're in a situation now where we're, we have to manage misinformation because of all the, you know, hey, how come they can do this in one day somewhere else and you can't do it in one day here? Well, we can do it in one day if you're a candidate. And it's, it, it's, it's our profession to know if you're a candidate or not and what's you know, when we can do an immediate and when we can, you know, do something delayed. And it's sometimes you're, you're discussing this and it's you're fighting Google or you're fighting in a billboard or something along those lines. So it's just strange how like, you know, the world just keeps changing and throwing things at you. And you're like, wait a minute, you're, you used to try to convince people to do it because they were afraid. Yeah. Now you're trying to tell them, no, no, keep your tea. No, 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 keep the tea. <laughs> this is true. I mean, uh, back in the day, it was it was literally they said, you know what? Your implants—they're going to last a lifetime. They're—they're going to—they're going to last forever. You know that was early on before they saw all the failures. Now they start to notice that hey, you know what? Implants can have issues, and now it's kind of a changing paradigm where we we start to think of implants almost like a, a, a knee replacement or a hip replacement, which are made out of a similar material. There, you know, the, the orthopedist doesn't say hey, this hip is going to last you you know 50 years. No, they say hey, listen, you know what? You may need a new hip in 10, 15 years or so because it starts to break down. So that's kind of the new paradigm that we're, we're starting to see with implants. You know, with, with the implants that I place, you know, with proper maintenance, with proper home care, they, they should last, you know, uh, the foreseeable future. But, you know, you, you have to have certain criteria and have to be placed well, too. That, that's, that's one thing that's very, very critical you know, you, you don't just want to get your implants placed by someone who took a weekend course or something like that, because, you know, there, there's a chance that they don't understand the, the biology behind what happens when the implant goes in, because putting the implant in, you know, that's the easy part. You got to make sure that it's playing out well, that it's going to be where you want it to be. And, you know, the body's constantly remodeling bone, remodeling tissue. And, you want that implant to look as good as as in you know 10 15 years as it does the day you place it and you know that that that's something where you have to have the planning and the foresight and the maintenance to be able to 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 say that sort of thing mm-hmm. yeah and a big a big part of doing you know taking that plan like you said you're planning these things out and that plan needs to translate into surgery and we have the technology nowadays to make these things very precise and place these implants accurately as if, you know, we're doing it on the computer Well, we can do it in the mouth and we can be within, you know, a fraction of a millimeter from where we planned it. And that technology, I know that you guys are, are, are up with the technology in your office and, and we utilize it in ours. Um, we spend a lot of time, money and efforts to make sure that our precision during surgery is, is unmatched. Um, we, we're, we're, exhausting every sort of technology to make sure that we're doing these things properly. Um, and that's the type of practice that I feel, you know, I would feel comfortable in going to that they're investing in the, in, in the technology, they're investing the education. We're always going to CE. I mean, we're specialists, but we're still learning. We're still figuring out how to do things even better. There's never, we're never satisfied with what we're doing. We want to do better. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's always something new coming out and, you know, you want to be on the on the forefront of these sort of things. You want to you want to know what's out there as as possible alternatives and just 
you know, better ways to do things. Cause you know, if you practice the same way that you practice now, as you did, you know, at the beginning of your career, you know, you're, you're not really growing, you're not really getting better. And that's, you know, that, that's, that's something that, uh, that we take very seriously. And, you know, we were just at a, at a course last weekend together. Um, you know, we travel across the country to learn more, to get better so we can treat our patients better. That's awesome. That is something I've <clears throat> noticed with you guys and with uh, your colleagues in your office there is that um, you're always uh, doing education, which to me means a great deal. Uh, if I'm going to have someone working on my mouth or you know something as serious as that, I, I want them to not feel like they know everything. So that's um, awesome. The other thing I heard you guys say that I really liked was you oftentimes give the patient what they, they need, not, not necessarily what they come in and probably what's less expensive, you know, like it's truly about what the patient's needs are um, as opposed to selling them the, the, the top item, which sometimes I'm sure in some cases uh, offices do, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, I want to end with just a silly question for you both, not silly, but just easy one, T softball, if you will. Um, and then we'll wrap up um, the number one thing that will put us in your office quickest, whether it be liquid or food related, what would it be? Dr. Uh, McCauley, I'll start with you. What's the worst thing? The worst thing that'll, that'll end up in the office? Uh, I mean, well, are you, are you talking about like, uh, like a liquid or what, what are you talking like, about? I mean, as far as like a food, if you, if you eat something hard enough, you can certainly crack your teeth and then you'll end up in the office pretty quick there. Like a jawbreaker. I mean, yeah. I mean, jawbreakers, you know, they don't call them that for nothing. I've had plenty of people, you know, they're eating sticky candy, like some chewy candy. And all of a sudden, you know, a crown just pops off or a tooth snaps or something. I mean, yeah, that, that's definitely something you want to try to avoid. Um, you know, softer yeah. foods are definitely going to be easier on your teeth, especially if you've got crowns or anything like that, because whenever you got a crown, um, you know, it's just not as strong as a natural tooth. And, you know, I've seen plenty of people come in and say, hey, you know what, I was I was eating, you know, I was eating this, the, I was cracking nuts or something. And then, you know, here, here, here's my tooth. I'm like, oh, <laughs> shoot. All right. <laughs> so much for that. I actually, I, I had a funny story about a patient. He, um, he went quail hunting and um, I guess he didn't take all the BBs out of his quail. So he cooked it up and when he was eating it, bit down, wow. cracked a tooth. So wow. he ended up and we had a, we had a place an implant for him because it was, it was too badly cracked, but. Uh, that sounds like you know, somebody maybe from uh, the university of Florida would have done that. Probably. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Right. <laughs> not from Michigan. No. Not from Michigan. Yeah, not Michigan. Right. No. Go Knowles. Go Knowles. I think, I think my answer would be um, some of these Instagram uh, products like these do it yourself veneers um people are doing their own ortho treatments um all sorts of like charcoal therapy you know we see a lot of things and you know one one thing that you'll see is like you can prep your tooth and you can put these things over your teeth now i mean that doesn't sound like a good idea so i don't know like you know they put these like like snap on smiles and you know yeah. it rubs against the gums and they come in with all this recession you're just like well did you really think this was going to work? I mean, you saved a few hundred dollars, but you're going to spend thousands trying to fix it now. Yeah, same thing. I mean, there's there's this uh, this new wave of do do it yourself orthodontics orthodontics as well, and I mean that is not something you want to get involved in because if you have any gum disease or any issues with your teeth, it is going to make it much worse. So don't don't do that. Go see your dentist, go see your orthodontist before you get anything like that done. That's what we're here for, honestly, is to give you give you the right treatments and, you know, make sure that you don't have issues like that. Because I've seen a fair amount of people come in that, you know, they've irreparably damaged their smile trying to make it better with with uh, do it yourself orthodontics. So. Wow. I, uh, I thought I've heard it all, but I've never heard of that. And I can't believe that that's actually a thing. Uh, <laughs> Wow. Well, don't do that, folks. Yeah. That's a <laughs> probably the best tip you're gonna give. Yeah. <laughs>
Well, guys, um, this has actually been great, man. It's really been uh, good to, to have this conversation with you both. Um, just to, to hear, you know, the 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 energy and the passion that you guys have in your field says a lot about you and your practice and uh, the reasons people should go see you up in the great uh, state of Michigan in the Detroit metro area and down South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Miami area. Uh, as well. And uh, I know that you also have recommendations throughout the country Absolutely. if people would need it. So thank you both. Uh, we appreciate everybody and we'll see you next time. And uh, till then, make it a great day. Thank you.